Hey y'all, Ram Dino here, coming at you from North Carolina. Well, I've had a lot of comments and a lot of viewers on my Aegis Max sleeping bag review, and a couple of them offered me some advice that uh, might help it out to work out better for me. So I decided I'd take them up on their advice. See what that is and what I do? Stick around. <laughs> So, one of the things I did with the Aegis Max sleeping bag is, I took it right out of the box, or right out of the bag rather, and took it backpacking. Hadn't really done anything with it, hadn't washed it. Not really that dirty, because uh, I use a liner. Um, but one of the suggestions that I've had from one of my subscribers is that, uh, that I need to wash it, and then I need to fluff it up. And once I do that, it'll have a whole lot, supposedly have a whole lot more loft to it, which of course the loft will be the insulating factor in it. So, I'm going to do that. But before I go and wash it, let's take another look at the bag, look at the thickness. I had another subscriber who wanted me to actually walk on the bag so that they could tell how much loft's in it. So we'll do that, and then we'll wash her and dry her, and we'll talk a little bit about that process, see what it looks like, and then we'll take it on this upcoming trip that we're getting ready to go on and we'll see if it makes a difference. Okay, so here is the Aegis Max sleeping bag. Um, you'll notice that it doesn't, doesn't have a lot of loft in it. Looks pretty flat. Uh, I'm measuring about maybe inch and a half, two inches max loft, and that includes the uh, both sides, the front and the back. Um, so, not a lot of loft there. Uh, it doesn't look like it's got a lot of feathers in it. A lot of down in it. Um, and so, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to walk on it. So, uh, let's walk on it. And somebody had requested that I do that. And that would tell them how much loft it had in it. So, we're really not seeing a lot of loft in it that way either. And my, as I walk on it, it compresses down um, pretty readily. You can see where I walked and everything. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wash it. And I'm going to be using um, Nick Wax, which is uh, made specifically for down washing uh, uh, sleeping bags and articles of clothing. Um, so, I don't really have uh, on the bag itself, it doesn't have a use and care label. Uh, if you can see that, that use and care label is Chinese on that side and doesn't really say anything of any circumstances about washing it on this side. So the bag itself's no, no help. Didn't come with anything, any other use and care labels. Uh, so I'm going to use Nick Wax. And you can do um, two things with Nick Wax. You can uh, hand wash it or you can wash it in a front loader. So I'm going to go ahead and load it in a front uh, wash it in a front loader uh, and of um, of course uh, it recommends if I don't have a use and care tag on the bag it recommends that uh, I wash it uh, cold water wash it on low um, don't wash it with anything else um, wash it on uh, you know the gentle cycle and then likewise when I go to uh, to dry it it says uh, you know wash it on gentle wash I mean excuse me what dry it on gentle dry it on the uh, low cycle um, one of the things it t says is that i need to when i take it out is kind of pull the clumps apart um, but what i'm going to use is a technique that i used um, uh, when washing my other bags and that is i'm going to throw some tennis balls in there uh, and let the tennis balls beat it uh, as it tumbles around and typically that uh, that distributes the down readily, breaks up the clumps and everything, and so uh, that kind of takes care of that for you so you don't have to do it manually. So let's go ahead and stick this sucker in the washer and see what happens. Okay, bag's in the washer, check. Let's see, we'll put the power on here. We want it to be light, check. Oop, too much spin.
Well, we need some spin. Low spin, got it on cold, got it on light soil. Should take 24 minutes. We've got our 3.4 ounces of Nick Wax in there and Which that obviously maxes out how much you're supposed to put in there anyway All right, there goes nothing And we'll come back in about 24 minutes and see what kind of shape the bags in Okay, so it does not look like this is going to work in a front loader because it, obviously it's not tumbling around. It's gotten so wet on one side that it's not tumbling. So uh, I can't take it out because it's locked in place. So the only, way, the only thing I could do would be stop it all together. All right, so we have washed it and see what it looks like. Yep, it's a mess. So, we'll put it in the dryer. And it's pretty lumpy, pretty clumpy. We're gonna go ahead and put in three tennis balls. Once again, there is no care label on it so we're going to do what the nick wax says and it says tumble on low we'll go for it okay so we are back um We've had the bag in there. We had it on uh, low heat, uh, probably for around an hour and a half. Um, and it was very uh, clumpy. So I had three tennis balls in there and I went ahead and put two clean tennis shoes in there as well as the, um, the tennis balls. And so then I put it on air fluff and let it run for about an hour or so and uh, so let's see what she looks like go ahead and pause it and take her out okay so looks like the clumping is gone so let's take it downstairs and lay it out and see for sure and we'll get a measurement on it and walk on it and see if we can tell the difference. But it does look a little fluffier than it was when we came up there. So let's go take a look. Okay, so I don't see any type of clumping anywhere in any of the baffles. Uh, so that's a good sign. Uh, it does look like it's a little taller, so let's check it out here. So we'll see. I think we were about an inch and a quarter and we're somewhere around three inches so that's actually uh i'm sorry we were about an inch and three quarters so uh we've come up a roughly an extra uh, come up roughly an extra inch and a quarter so that's somewhere around a i don't know 75 percent increase 60 to 75 percent so that's pretty good let's see. let's go ahead and do the walkover test that the viewer requested that like we did before and see if it's any better and yeah yeah i can see it looks like there's a little more loft to it of course we are discovered that with our tape um and just looking back at it you can see the footprints a little more so there's definitely some more loft to it and more loft should equal more r value which should mean that it would be more comfortable and more closer to its uh proposed or advertised uh rate that it would keep you warm at so last night, it was only supposed to be um, in the 40, high 40s, low 50s. Um, uh, of course, that, this is after my bag has already been washed and fluffed up. 
and uh, I uh, I did go ahead and bring uh, uh, my heavy liner just in case and an extra summer bag rated to 40 just in case um, to see how it did still don't think it only I think it got into the high 40s maybe um, but again the Aegis Max did not perform well um, if I hadn't had the additional uh, liner you know if I'd gone the lightweight liner I would have been in big trouble I'd have been really cold um, so and then the zipper screwed up again uh, I get tired of fighting that zipper so again I think this kind of concludes it doesn't matter if you wash it and fluff it up uh, it's still a failure as a is a bag a, a lower temperature bag it says it's rated 35 it's not so uh, I won't be using it except in the summer it's a good lightweight bag as far as being light but it's just not warm at all so it's going to be you know 60 high 50 maybe otherwise I'll be going with whatever my next bag is all right so to sum it all up for this video uh pros and cons of this bag is the pros is it's cheap and light um it's only about 75 dollars on amazon uh, and only weighs about a pound um so that'd be a good summer bag um because it does not live up to its rate rated value of uh, a low of around 35 degrees says it's somewhere around 35 to 45 so even at 45 i'm cold in it so i think it's more uh you know a 55 and above bag and even then if you're a cold sleeper you'd need a liner with it um so uh those are the cons of it uh doesn't live up to its expectations uh the zipper uh, i've had problems with the zipper uh the zipper gets hung up at the pull uh, it catches the fabric easy and down then down at the bottom the zipper will also come undone at the bottom uh, prematurely and so you wind up unzip finding yourself waking up in the morning with it unzipped so that's just aggravating and then of course waking up in the middle of the night trying to redo the zipper so that now it's in the correct configuration so that you can zip it back up so all those things uh, just kind of add to the cons of it. So would I recommend the bag? Um, probably not. Uh, you can find uh, summer bags that are um, probably lighter and maybe a little bit cheaper. Um, you know, you don't need a lot of loft in the summer. Uh, obviously, I would not recommend it for any type of uh, fall bag or early spring bag, and it definitely is not a winter bag. Um, so that's, uh, that's it. That's my second and last review for the Aegis Max sleeping bag. Uh, if you got any kind of questions, or uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. If you got anything out of this video, give me a thumbs up down there. Hit my face at the end of this video to subscribe to my channel. And as always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.